This is a, a defining moment in the novel. It's a little past the middle, I guess. Uh, and again, this is a perfect example of something that was taken direct, was taken from life and didn't work because a friend who is a, the mother of sons told me a story that inspired this. And I tried to write it unacrimoniously, but it, had, it needed teeth. So it, it's a man who is angry. And he's angry because of the things, something that w any kid in school will understand. He's angry about bullying. Uh, and it's the first time he's really seen it, and it unlocks him, and we see another side of him. A quiet, gentle boy named Russell Beale uh, fails to turn up in class on the last day of fifth grade. And so the hero of our story, Archer, and a very capable boy he knows named Raymond Petrovich are sent by the teacher to go find the missing boy. We begin. Russell was in the rest restroom, watching the door when it opened. Both his hands were tied to a faucet with plastic clothesline. It was wrapped around and around. You could see how he tried to get loose. But what you really noticed was the word written across his forehead in pink day-glow magic marker, three big letters, gay. Russell knew what they'd written on him. He could read it backward in the mirror. The, op the door opened behind me. It was Mr. McLeod, our student teacher. He started to speak, but Raymond showed him the word on Russell's forehead. It was beginning to blur, but it was there. You could feel the heat coming off, Mr. McLeod. We hadn't seen him mad before. Sixth graders, we said, and showed him the clothesline. Give it to me, Mr. McLeod said. He stuffed it, stuffed it in his pocket. They brought it from home. I'm not saying who they were, Russell said. His voice, was, his voice cracked and started to change right then. It was like this was the beginning of the end of being a kid for him. Something was on the floor by the toe of Mr. McLeod's boot. He picked it up. It was the pink Dayglow magic marker. Shall we go see the sixth graders, he said to all of us. Let's do it, Russell said. The sixth graders were all over the place, girls in clumps at desks, guys up on the windows. They were waiting for their graduation party. When Mr. McLeod walked in behind the principal, every girl in the room screamed. My ears rang all day. Selfie sticks came out, phones they weren't supposed to have, everything. Their teacher went to get our teacher, Mrs. Stanley. She came in looking for Russell. When she saw him, she, in relief, she reached out. Here's my lost sheep, she said. I wasn't lost, Russell said. They came up behind me. The principal, Mrs. Dempsey, drew herself up. The sixth graders were wondering what this was about. Children, I know you envied the fifth graders the opportunity to learn from Mr. McLeod in Mrs. Stanley's class. This is your opportunity now to ask him anything you'd like to know. She was setting them up for something, but they didn't suspect. We're all gifted, but they were borderline. Whimpering came from some of the girls. Then a guy raised a casual hand. Dude, you ever shoot anybody? Mrs. Dempsey sighed. Mr. McLeod said, no, and I hope not to. I joined the National Guard because they'll pay for grad school. I want to be a teacher. It's my goal. The class thought that over, more or less. Phones flashed. Speak to these children about goals, Mrs. Dempsey said. We all need goals, Mr. McLeod said. Here's one. Stay away from people who don't know who they are, but want you to be just like them. People who will label you. People who will write their fears on your face. He let them think about that. Then he reached in his pants pocket and pulled out the yellow clothesline. They watched it coil in the air. Then he pulled out the magic marker. Does anybody know who these belong to? He said. 
he seemed to know someone would want to confess. It turned out to be a kid named Perry Highsmith, who was, who was tight with two other kids, Aidan Cooper and Jeff Spinks. And who would you be? Mr. McLeod said. Perry Highsmith, the kids said, surprised that everybody didn't know. It was no biggie. Perry looked through, away through his flop of hair. It was just like some fun on the last day of school. It was our goal to have fun. He started to drop back into his chair. Get up, Mr. McLeod said, and waited till Perry did. What about the word? It was just a word, Perry said. It was random. Mr. McLeod waited some more. Gay, Perry muttered. A whispering sound made the rounds of the room. It started out a giggle and ended with, with a rumble at the back. Gay's not a random word, Mr. McLeod said. It's an identity. It's my identity. Silence fell. You could have heard breathing, but there wasn't any. Then one more time the girl screamed. It was ear splitting. <laughs>